So here are some tips about sewing with Georgette. Georgette is like a chiffon, it's quite sheer, but it has more of a texture. It has like a crepe-like texture to it on both sides of the material. You can kind of see through it a little bit. It's a beautiful fabric and it drapes so lovely, but it's very tricky to work with. So I've cut these shears out. They're gonna be curtains and I've pinned it together. The first step is always pinning. Even if they're straight seams, it seems so silly to, to just pin when it's straight seams, but you really need to do that, especially with the Georgette because Georgette has a little give to it. You can see it has kind of a mechanical stretch. So it stretches a bit. Now I've pinned together the seam and we don't wanna skip the pinning. And I've gotten to the bottom here and you can see that one side is longer than the other. Now I've really measured these panels when I was sewing or when I was cutting and you know, I did the best I could, but this kind of fabric really moves a lot when you're cutting it, when you're sewing it, everything. So I'm going to try to repin it again and see, okay, is one side really longer than the other or was it my pinning? And what's different about chiffon and Georgette especially is that when you're pinning, you don't pin one end and the other end and ease it in. If you do that, more than likely you're gonna have puckering on one side over the other side because of the cutting inconsistencies. It's so, so, so hard to cut and therefore so hard to get the same exact measurements from one panel to the next, whether it's a straight seam or a curved seam that it makes it really, really challenging. Now, of course, if you are sewing a dress or something like that, you have to line up some points like the apex position, something like that. You definitely have to add up some of them. And you can just kind of check to see as you go, was it really my pinning? Oh, you can see here. You can also look at it vertically to see that this side is a little bit longer than this side because it's kind of flapping out. So really that's even a little too loose on that side. So I'd really smooth it out and check it again. I really spend extra time pinning this stuff because it makes the end product look so much better and I'm gonna show you that in a minute here. So if you get to the end, looks like, looks like they're pretty close. Let's see once we release this. All right. Pretty close here. Whichever side was the shorter side, so this is the shorter side for me, that's the side I'm gonna be putting on top when I'm sewing. So when I put it through the sewing feeder, I always put the shorter side on top because it's more likely that the top is going to stretch out and the bottom is not going to stretch out. And that's um, because we don't have a dual feeder or even if we do have a dual feeder and it's feeding through the top layer, it's still more likely to stretch out on these kind of crepe materials. So really check that and make sure it's lined up nicely. Then when you come to sewing, I wanna show you two examples here. The first one is an example I did quickly to show you what it looks like when you don't pin. So I did not pin, and you can see that this is the difference. This side, which was the top side when I was sewing, totally stretched out. The underside is completely puckering. It's really, really obvious, and you can see it when it's open as well. And even if you iron it out, it's never gonna look as nice. 
So you always want to pin. It's super, super important. You can see how much that crepe stretches out. Now here's another example of it pinned. And you can see how much nicer it looks. You can see that the one side is nice and smooth and the other side is as well. So it looks pretty even. And when it's open, it looks nice too. I haven't even ironed this yet, but it looks really nice and smooth. That's what we're going for. And I'm going to be getting into the French seams coming up next in the, the next video. So stay tuned.